Hello, my name is Jimmy Bonero, and in this video, we're going to set up an auto store configuration that we can browse a shared folder and be able to filter the subfolder results. To be able to do this, I've already created a script for the Conic Minolta that we will use in this config. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a copy of this, and I've already created a project folder. Uh, for this video and I'm gonna paste it inside of this folder called code files and I've got uh, a config file folder here which is empty and we're gonna go create that configuration right now All right, with my task set up, what I'm gonna do is grab two components. First would be the Conic Minolta, and then the next one would be Senta folder. If I wanted to add additional process components uh, in between the capture and the route, such as OCR or professional image management or any e-connectors, I could certainly do that. Uh, what I'm going to cover is just the basics for making the uh, functionality uh, come alive with the, uh, with the script be able to browse and filter. I'm going to open the Konica component and we're going to remove these items here and I'm going to start with a basic form. For the name we can give it any name we want. In this example I'm going to just call it send to folder. The next thing that we want to do is we want to enable dynamic form. And in the source path field, we want to put the path to that script. All right, so I've confirmed that my script path is correct. By default, the raise event when the form is loaded and when the form is submitted is enabled. We'll just leave those as is. That's the general tab. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the fields tab and I'm going to create three fields. So these are the three fields that we're going to need. The first is going to be our route two. This is our home path that we're going to uh, use to define what the home path or the base path or the root path is for the users to begin to browse from. The next field is the folder tab. This will be the tab that the user actually sees and they'll be making their selection on which folder they want from here. The next field is a filter field. This will be the field that the user will be able to enter in the criteria that they want to be able to filter the subfolders by. The way the script is written is it is relying on the fact that the name for each of these fields are as they are here. So root2, folder, and filter. Without making changes to the script, these are the fields that we would want to use uh, because the script has been designed to use these name references for each of these different fields. For the display, you can assign any name you want here. This will be what the user sees uh, at the touch screen of the Konica Minolta device. So you can make the display whatever you want. For the root 2, we want that to be a text field. For the folder, we want this to be a list. And for the filter, we want that to be text. For the folder and for the filter, we want to be able to notify the server whenever changes are made to any of the values at the touch screen. So these two checkboxes here to notify the server when the field changes are enabled. We don't need that for the root 2. However, with the root 2, we do want to change the properties for that particular field. 
what we're going to do here is define that browsing point that the users will start from. We're not going to expose this field to the user, so we're going to change this from simple to hidden. And the other thing we're going to do is change it from 30 to 192. What this will do is allow us to paste a path or copy or type in a path for where we want the user to go. I've already got a shared folder and I'll place that path right in there. So these three changes are the only ones I need to make. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to leave the folder and I'm going to leave the filter fields alone. All right, next thing I'm going to do is come to the Components tab, and in the Send a Folder component, what we're going to do is define the folder path to be that folder that the user selects. So in my available RRTs list, when I come to the Konica Minolta, these are the three fields that I created, the Root 2 Select folder and the Filter folder. The one I want is the Select folder. This is the one, again, that the user is browsing. So I want to take that, and whatever they select here, this will be the value that we will um, place for the folder during runtime. Now, if I wanted to define the rename schema, I can do that. If I wanted to add another field uh, in addition to the three that I already created, I can do that too. Again, we're just uh, covering just what are the, the bare bones minimum of what we need to do in order to get the script to, to function. So you're certainly welcome to adjust the rename file if you want. In this example, I'm going to just leave that alone. And here I'm going to click OK. All right, I'm going to go and save this configuration file in my config file folder. All right, and the configuration file is now ready to be tested. So let's do that next. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the service. All right, let's take a look at our Konica Minolta device. I'm gonna come into Auto Store. Okay, when I come into here, here is our send a folder form that we created. I'll select that. And if you recall, we created three fields. One was a root two field, a folder field, and a filter field. We don't see the root two field because that was hidden. Uh, we do see the select folder, which we called folder. Uh, select folder was the display, and then filter folder for the display for the filter folder. With the select folder, it's showing the path that we defined in the root folder. When I select this item, We'll start our browsing uh, from this point, and uh, I've got some different items here. I'm going to select the HR item, and when I come back in here, what I want to make sure is that there's a button that takes me back to where I was, which there is here. Now, I'm going to test that when I go back to corporate, what should happen is that I've reached the root of where I need to be, so from this point, I should not be able to go back. Uh, because I'm at the home base or the home location or the root folder. So back is working, so forward's working. Let's go into HR. And what I'm going to do is select our employee files item because the next thing I want to test is our filter. When I come into employee files, we've got a few, quite a few uh, different employees that are here. So what I want to do is press cancel. And while I'm in the employee files, let's test the filter folder item. And we're going to look for Rob. Now, when I put that value in there, when I come back to the employee files, I will have a shorter list where Rob is part of the subfolder uh, name. And now with a reduced list, I can select the one that I want, press OK. And when I do that, I've now got my path updated here. Again, this is the field that we're using in the send to folder, folder path field, uh, and that RRT is going to contain this entire value. So if I come uh, 
press this item here at the very top corner, I can come to the very end of this string because the string is a lot longer than uh, is visible. And over here I'm looking at the far left and looking at the far right so I can see that's where I want the document to go. When I press OK, at this point the document can be placed in the document feeder face up and the start button pressed. So navigation's working, uh, scripts working, configuration's working, and we're ready to go. So that concludes the uh, setup for the uh, browse and filter configuration setup. I hope this has been informative, and until next time, thanks for watching.